How can altruistic traits ever evolve? Could it be through group selection? Well, with our little horned organisms versus the angels, we saw that's very unlikely. This can only happen under very special circumstances, which in fact we'll cover later in the course. It may often be that a trait just looks to be altruistic, but the donor is either being selfish or in fact it's being manipulated. And let's go through some of those. These could involve what's called mutualism or parasitism. Now, mutualism is where both parties gain immediate benefits. There's a direct benefit from helping another organism. And there's a lot of these in nature. So here's a mutualistic relationship between ants and acacia trees. And the acacia trees deliberately grow a gall which provides a home for the ants. So the galls provide shelter for the ants. They attract an organism they want to have climbing around on their twigs. And ants are very useful for the tree because the ants like to eat aphids and other insects that will otherwise remove the foliage from the plant. So this is a very direct mutualistic relationship between the two different species. We've seen before mycorrhizae, where you have a fungus that grows on the roots of trees. And again, we have a direct relationship. The plants are producing carbohydrates through photosynthesis that feeds the fungus. And then the fungus is very good at extracting minerals from the soil. So the fungus provides food for the plants. The plants provide food for the fungus. Now, another way we might see what looks like altruistic behavior is, in fact, parasitism. And here's a classic case. It's called brood parasitism. This is seen in a number of different bird species. And the most famous brood parasites are cuckoos. This is an adult bird on the right trying to shut up this noisy nestling that's constantly demanding more food. And it's a much, much bigger bird. It's a different species. It's a cuckoo. So the reed warbler is feeding the young cuckoo, presumably because it thinks it's its own offspring. And it has every reason to think it is its own offspring because the cuckoo's eggs are laid within the nest of the reed warbler and as soon as the cuckoo hatch, they chuck out the warbler's own eggs or chicks, and then they become the last survivor in the nest. And it's really, really difficult for the adult reed warbler to detect, is this a cuckoo's egg? Is this a cuckoo's egg? Or is that my own egg? Which is which? Is that a baby cuckoo or is it my baby? They all look a lot alike. And as it turns out, we can tell the difference, but the birds have a very difficult time distinguishing between the two. And as a result, they're subject to this kind of parasitism. So this is not an altruistic behavior. This is a manipulated host of a parasite. 